In this video, I'm going to show you how I have five daily habits that help me declutter, organize, and clean my house on a regular basis. I'm also going to show you my master cleaning schedule and take you through Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. This video is a longer video than my normal videos because I wanted to show you how I completely reset my house on a weekly basis. I do not strive to have a home that is clean and tidy all the time. I strive to have a home that is easy to tidy and easy to clean. And that's a distinction that I needed. However, these are the habits that make it possible for me to tidy and clean my home. And what I mean is we have messes. I have messes in the kitchen on a regular basis. The kids have left a mess somewhere in the house while I'm talking to you. We live here, we homeschool, so we are here a lot. And I have learned that messes happen when the kids are little. They are forming beautiful habits of cleaning up after themselves, putting away games and toys when they're finished, but it doesn't happen every single time. And I have had to let go of my frustration of walking into a room and seeing a mess. Instead, I had to change how I thought about it. I walk into a room and I see love. I see my children playing. Maybe they're fighting sometimes too, but I also see a mess made from based from creativity, from inspiration, from learning. I see a mess in the kitchen because I fed my family meals from scratch. They helped themselves to snacks. This countertop regularly attracts clutter. It used to bother me, but now I know it's just part of living here. It's just because we are centralized in our kitchen so much. These are just snacks that were <laughs> they had out on this day, on Monday. And sometimes Mondays are a little bit messier in our house. I call it Messy Monday in our house because there's just stuff left over from the weekend. We get a little lax with our routines and our habits and we're home, and my husband's home, and we're busy sometimes. We're running around doing stuff from the weekends. And so Monday always feels like the biggest reset day for me and part of my daily five is resetting the kitchen every single day and sometimes I have to do that chore many times during the day after breakfast after lunch before dinner because my kids eat more than three meals a day and they have snacks and I cook a lot of things from scratch I make a lot of uh, recipes for my daughter because she's dairy free and she wants you know the special stuff so I always have some things going like this pile of uh, budgeting stuff some school stuff there's some recipes that I want to try it was my son's birthday he's got his comic books here we've got some coloring books it's all just stuff that needs to go back to its home or have a home designated and having a daily task for me to reset this kitchen gives us as a family an opportunity to reset that and to allow the kitchen to live and breathe as the heart of our home sometimes. And that stuff just ends up here. And that's okay, because it only takes a few minutes to put everything where it goes. Sometimes the kids help me, especially if it's a lot of their toys or whatever. But most of the time, it's just stuff that I can easily put away in under 10 minutes. This is a, what we call a calm jar, an ooze jar, a jelly jar. It has lots of different nicknames. We've been exploring with some sensory things at home. And this, for my kids, they love to just watch it. It's a way that they calm down, they center themselves, they take a minute. If they're upset or frustrated or fighting with a sibling or fighting with me about something, <laughs> they'll get they'll spend some time with the calm jar. Uh, they'll take it outside. They'll go sit in the family room. They'll go sit in their bedrooms. I just wanted to share that with you, that it's one of those little tools that we have in our house and it ends up all over the place in our house but I wanted to show that to you because it's this little ooze jar jelly jar calm jar and my kids just they love it it's usually the afternoon when I get to do this task. Most of my cleaning tasks or my reset tasks happen in the afternoon. We school all morning or we have appointments and then we come home and kind of reset for the afternoon, just have some quiet time at home. The kids play outside. I reset the rooms scheduled for the day. And one of those things is putting things where they go. This is like a therapy box or a sensory box. I have therapy putty. I have the calm jar. I have these like shaky glitter jars, things that just um, the kids can use to calm down. These, this is called chew, jewelry, 
uh, one of my kids uh, has an oral fixation and they have Rubik's cubes and Rubik's stars and fidgets and it's just stuff for them from a sensory and occupational therapy perspective that have really helped them. I have learned as part of slow and simple living that when my kids want to play a game, which is every single day, I have to stop what I'm doing and focus on that and enjoy that moment with them and play a game and spend time with them. I used to worry so much about the clutter and cleaning and resetting and, you know, what was around us when we were playing a game and what was the next thing I had to clean up. And as a part of simple living and decluttering and organizing all of these years, I have learned to prioritize (laughs) the things that matter most to me. And it's really, it's really joyful now to not worry about that kind of stuff. And that's why I love my checklists. I have one for laundry and then one for the cleaning schedule that I showed you. And I have them for Monday through Sunday with Sunday being my catch-all day where the stuff I didn't get to Monday through Saturday, I do on Sunday just to make sure the whole week has been reset. And I don't always do everything on Monday that's scheduled on Monday. We might be busy. Someone is sick. I don't feel like doing it. But it gives me an opportunity to just catch up the next day without having to think about what's done or not done. The decision-making part of it has been removed for me, which is why these checklists for me are so amazing. And so for me, I have to reset the kitchen and get some laundry going. That's two of my five daily habits every day that keep the house running, that make me feel productive, that give me something to do in the house. And the checklist breaks it down into bite-sized tasks that are something I can accomplish on a daily basis that are not time consuming. And so if I skip a day or miss a day, it's so easy to catch up the next day. And by breaking apart my house and my routines this way into these daily habits, it makes it a whole lot easier for me to maintain the house every single day and focus on being clean and tidy, which was a problem four years ago before I decluttered hundreds maybe thousands of things and got rid of so much stuff that now I can make it simple for myself and I can reset the kitchen and do the laundry. I The beds are already made. So those are all things I can knock out in under 30 minutes. And I uh, had a couple bowls soaking on this particular day. So I wanted to come back and really and truly and honestly reset the kitchen because the way that feels motivates me to do other things in the house. And when the kitchen is reset, the counters are clear, everything is, you know, the kit, the counters are clean, everything is good to go. I am then more likely (laughs) to make dinner at home because it's already done for me. I can set the coffee for the next day. I can play with the kids and not think about how dirty the kitchen is because it's done. And by doing it every day and having less stuff to maintain, that is a huge part of the five habits that help me clean, declutter, and organize on a regular basis. I had to get rid of so much stuff and really just keep the things that mattered the most to me. I have a whiteboard on my fridge. Sometimes it (laughs) shows the menu for the week or the day and sometimes it's a to-do list for me and my husband. And as I was going through this day on Monday, I was thinking of things that I wanted to do, projects that I wanted to do. And on Mondays, I um, reset the dining room and I reset the family room. And what I'm showing you here is the dining room (laughs) on a daily basis. This is what it looks like. Just random stuff, random toys and markers and things. And I always uh, pull in a kid to help me get the stuff off the floor, put things where they belong. It's also an opportunity for me to evaluate the room any clutter that's in here that needs to go, anything that needs to change seasonally, anything extra that I might want to pay attention to for cleaning on that particular day. It is very much like zone cleaning, if you are familiar with that method, uh, where you plan a room for the day, a room or two for the day, and you focus on that and you clean that. However, I don't make myself a cleaning checklist. I call it a room reset. So for me, that means I might be doing some extra cleaning in here, but mostly I'm just putting things back together in this room and giving the room an opportunity to be clutter free or decluttered on that day. And here, this was an opportunity for me to separate the artwork 
from the last time I did this reset and take their special artwork pieces and put it in their portfolios. And then this was the pile for trash. This got decluttered to the trash can. It was hanging by the window and now it's not. This room just got a reset. That took less than 15 minutes to give it the lift that it needed. And recently I showed you how I organized these games, mostly the ones on the top shelf are the ones that get played the most. And this room right here I'm showing you is our homeschool room. It is on Thursdays. It is not going to be done in this video because I am doing Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday in this video and that is going to make it long enough. But this room is desperate for a reset. Also on my list of things to do is to uh, organize their winter gear. Those were the snow pants, the gloves, the hats, the, the boots. They came upstairs and I just need to see who needs what for this coming winter. Back to my checklist. Every Monday, in addition to the dining room, we reset the family room. This, <laughs> and this room seriously gets like this so often because the kids are playing in here um, and they... Uh, play board games, they play toys, they watch TV, they roller skate, we have the trampoline. So there's a lot of activity in this room. We also have our morning basket time in here. So there's a lot of things that happen in this room uh, regularly. This room has to be reset every day. We usually try to do it before we go to bed too. But on Mondays, it gets the big reset. That means everything is getting put back where it belongs for the week until we do it again later. My seven-year-old was my helping hands this day. It's a lot easier for him to get things off the floor than it is for me. It also helps him realize the importance of putting things away. He is actually the one that struggles the least with that habit of putting things away and putting things back. He's often cleaning up for someone else. He is very good at cleaning up his board games and his toys when he's finished playing. And maybe it's just because he's the youngest and he was, it's just always been a part of his life. Whereas my older two, these were habits that I myself only started forming four years ago. So maybe that's why, but he always is such a good helper and really is great at cleaning up his own mess, which the rest of us are still working on. He's got a really great habit built there for a seven-year-old. And he enjoys helping me because we always get a chance to chat. And he says, when we're done this, can we play uh, Uno? When we're done this, can we play Mailborn? <laughs> so he always knows that at the end of working on a little project like this for 10 or 15 minutes, that I'll probably play a board game with him. Focusing on a room or two a day helps me gather all the trash that has accumulated there, get it in the trash, an opportunity to just evaluate anything in here that doesn't belong in here anymore because it belongs somewhere else or because it needs to be donated or trashed or gotten rid of in some way. It's when we reset this family room, I pull out the couches, we lift up the corners of the rug, we get everything that isn't in its right spot put into its right spot, put into the trash or put into the donate basket that I keep in the laundry room. And it's just an opportunity to make small decisions and question things along the way rather than decluttering massive projects or looking at everything and deciding what to keep. It's just a chance to look at what's in the room for that day in that moment in time and see if there's any small decisions that could be made. And this is how it looks when it's reset, when it's all everything's put back together. It gives me a chance to actually clean the room. On Mondays, I dust the entire house. I especially pay big attention to the ceiling fans on top of um, the door frames. Um, during the week, the furniture may or may not get an extra dusting just because it's something that I see more regularly than things that are higher than me, like the fan or the doors or the tops of door frames. Um, otherwise, during the week, when I see something on a surface, like a, a piece of furniture, I often will just take care of it. I don't wait until Mondays to do it. I found this Uno card on top of the fan. I'm pretty sure somebody was playing the game and got mad and threw the cards up in the air because how else would it have landed on the fan? It was just so ridiculous that I wiped the fan. Now we had, my son and I cleaned up the Uno from the floor, tidied it before I started cleaning it. So it was a very recent thing because I had cleaned the fan last week and it wasn't there. So it's just so funny that there was an Uno card on top of there when I was cleaning. I'm really glad it wasn't there all week. 
I have this little feather duster and uh, that's the thing I hit furniture with throughout the week, not just on Mondays, or else I actually will just use a cloth wipe, uh, a, a dry cloth wipe and just dust. I know there's some um, solutions that you can use that have like essential oils and vinegar um, that you can very like use as a light dusting solution. I just dry dust everything. Uh, do you have any really great dusting tips for me? This is just how I always have done it, how my mother taught me to do it, to just dry dust. But if you do like some kind of a solution, will you let me know in the comments, please? Because I'm always looking for tips that might uh, shorten my work or lessen the cleaning work that we have to do in the house. And true to form, my seven-year-old wanted to play a game when we were finished this uh, cleaning burst that we were doing together. And he decided he would clean off this, what we call the white table or the breakfast table. And so we could play Uno. He wanted to play some Uno. So I finished the dusting throughout the rest of the house. I told him to go ahead, finish cleaning and set it up. And I would come back after I finished my cleaning task. I've always feel it's important to make them wait until I'm finished doing whatever it is I'm doing because it's teaching him that I'm taking the time to make our house clean and tidy and home and, and f the feeling of home involves those words and that it's it doesn't just happen. I have to do the work to do it. He has to do the work to do it. We're all living here. We're one big family. We're one big team. And the more they help me, the faster everything gets done. And then we can play games and have fun. And he was he's always willing to wait to play a board game. And he wanted to play Uno. So we sat down and played Uno in between cleaning tasks. Part of resetting the dining room every week means that I pull all the furniture out from the wall and I clean behind the furniture and then I also sweep out any cards or toys or Legos or whatever's in there and I sweep all that out so that I can run the vacuum completely and properly and then I'll also wipe down the baseboards behind the furniture. It's just the little extra things that I make time for when I'm resetting a room and I'm cleaning a room and since I've already dusted and um, swept throughout the room I just finish everything everything with a vacuum for the floor because usually when I dry dust stuff ends up onto the floor. This room has always been a multi-purpose room for us. It has our large farmhouse table that can seat eight so we eat meals here. We also play board games. We do art projects. Sometimes we do school. The kids play play-doh here. Um, so a lot of things happen in this room and so the bookshelves that are there make it more accessible for the activities that actually happen in this room and then it's just been a personal goal to keep the table as clear as possible these these uh, past four months I set that goal at the beginning of the school year for us last year because we ended up doing school at the table all the time and then we weren't eating there so it's just been a personal goal that we keep this table clear so we can always easily have dinner here and the boys were <laughs> then battling Uno on their own while I kept cleaning. And they will always stop what they're doing and help me. But I think it's important that they see the work that goes into housekeeping. And it's why I think it's so important that they have their chores every day as well. They help me unload the dishwasher. They feed the dog. They wipe the, kid, the bathroom counters um, in the kid's bathroom and in the downstairs bathroom. They um, have to tidy their rooms. And they will, uh, they will stop and help me pick stuff up, uh, put stuff away, uh, put stuff in recycling as I'm going. But as I run the vacuum throughout the whole house, that's one of my five tasks every day is to run the vacuum throughout the, um, at least the main floor. That's always my goal, the main floor, where we have our family room, our kitchen, our dining room, uh, the school room, and the front hallway. And the dogs are with us all the time as well. So there's always dog hair built up and dirt coming in the house. We don't wear our shoes in the house, but it's always, you know, I mean, kids are running in and out all the time. The dogs are in and out all the time. And um, so I always feel like running the vacuum every day makes a big difference in cleanliness for us. And as I go throughout the house, even though we tidied and I swept and we cleaned everything up, I always end up with stuff that just gets tucked into my pockets like straw wrappers and Legos and uh, hair ties and all the little things that get missed which is another reason I like running the vacuum every day is all that stuff collects pretty quickly this is just one day of stuff that I missed before I ran the vacuum uh, Legos uh, um, cardboard 
So on Mondays, in addition to my daily five, I shoot to dust the entire house, reset the family room, the dining room, and mop the main floor. And the daily five that I try to do every single day are to make the beds, run the vacuum on the main floor, tidy the entire house, reset the kitchen, and do laundry. We're on to Tuesday morning. I'm playing a game with my seven-year-old. We are starting the day with unmopped floors because that did not happen on my checklist yesterday. I ran out of time. And that's why I love it so much is that I can just pick it up the next day. It's like a loop schedule um, or zone cleaning where it gives you some forgiveness because the tasks are simple. Did I get to do it? No. Is it okay? Yes. My 10-year-old is making Belgian waffles on unmopped floors on a clean counter so it counts we're doing okay we're doing good he has learned to clean up after himself he um, has almost mastered the entire process he's not a hundred percent comfortable with the hot the heat of the waffle iron he still likes me to be there when he does that part but the rest of it he handles himself and it's beautiful it's just so beautiful to have that autonomy for him to be able to just get it done and know exactly how to do it and this is not something I could have taught my children four years ago or fostered a habit like that in them from my own daily habits because we had so much clutter and so much stuff everywhere. So by only keeping things that we use, we lead, we love, we want now makes it possible to focus on things that matter the most and teaching them the importance of chores. Of course, here he is. I have left the room and just left the camera running. He is supposed to be unloading the dishwasher, but he is smacking the spatula on the side of the cabinets and just probably enjoying the sound of it. And he keeps checking to see if I'm coming because he knows I'm going to be like, yo, dude, cut it out. <laughs> just empty the dishwasher. But this is his chore and he's 10 and he's going to turn that spatula into a Jedi sword for you. This is the chore that he helps me with most every day. Someone else will usually tap in or if he doesn't feel like doing it, he will barter with one of his siblings for them to do it. But it's the one he helps me with the most. Uh, it's, it's just uh, the routine and the process that we have fallen into. We're really very good at it. See how we switch the sponge out and we don't even talk. Uh, I, we have two sponges and whatever sponge was from the day before goes into the dishwasher and gets washed in the dishwasher. And I do that a few times until the sponges are just unable to be used anymore. And then I use them to clean the sink before I throw them out. I give them one last life to clean my kitchen sink with um, some Castile soap and some baking soda and uh, hydrogen peroxide. Um, and we are just finishing up the morning section of chores and making sure the kitchen is reset. And now today, it took five minutes. It did not take anywhere near as long as it took me on Monday because we went to bed with clear countertops. We put the dishes to sleep. We put the, <laughs> we put the kitchen to sleep. We put the dishes in the dishwasher. We wiped everything down. We went to bed that way because I had cleared off all the counters that morning. And the rest of the week is so much easier. We're coming off of a messy Monday, the rest of the week is just easier because everything has been reset in the kitchen and it just takes me five minutes to reset it again. Now he just finished helping me with the kitchen and that's pretty much where he taps out and I wanted some extra help with the winter gear so I was listening to him complain about needing to <laughs> help me with the short project of organizing the winter gear and that's just one of the things that happens during the week. I find time for these little projects and the boys had decided to empty the winter gear bins right here onto the rug and the dogs like made a bed I, it just turned into something I didn't want it to be so I asked them if they would help me clean it all up and sort it and organize it now my boys for whatever reason they enjoy this and maybe it's just because they have been such a huge part of my own minimalism journey and decluttering and organizing and cleaning and developing these routines and habits for myself that they see how I do this all the time it has become part of our daily life to consider what we own and consider what we could donate i needed them to try on all the winter stuff that we had to figure out what we still needed to buy and what we had extras of what could still be uh pulled from last year and reused for this year and then i wanted them to sort everything for my daughter and for me and my husband too and so we had two bins and a bag full of winter boots, pants, 
uh, snow pants, coats, gloves, hats, all that. And they sorted everything and made it into piles for me to figure out what we owned. And these are the little uh, organizing product uh, projects and decluttering projects that I just sneak in during the week because it needs to be done. I wrote it on my checklist yesterday. I want it out of my hallway and that was my motivation to do it. We ended up with a pile of scarves, uh, some uh, snow socks for snowboarding, and then all of these hats for everybody. I have more than enough hats. I had a matching set of gloves for everybody, like snow gloves, except for my daughter. We ended up missing one of her gloves. I'm wondering if it's in the hall closet. I might be able to find it. But otherwise, I have everything I need for this winter. We ended up with five gloves with no mates, so I'll declutter that to the trash. I don't really know what else to do with them. And then I have a couple coats that are too big for next year. And uh, so we uh, actually ended up with extra coats and boots that are too big for the kids this year that were given to me by uh, a friend who has a daughter two years older than my daughter and a son about six months older than my oldest. So I'm able to get a lot of hand-me-downs from a friend of mine. Um, and so then I decided to get these bins that we weren't using in the schoolroom and to purpose them for winter gear. And I wanted a little bin like this for each kid so that they could have their hats, their gloves, their scarves, anything that they want to keep for winter gear in these bins. And then I laid the, labeled them with my label maker and then I made one for my husband and I to share as well. And the idea behind this is that I'm going to end up actually putting them in our hall closet. We have a shelf in there. I want to be able to just make it easy for the kids to put on their winter gear by themselves to go out back and play. And what I don't want is have to hunt and find these things. This has worked very well for shoes. Yes, I'm just throwing everything onto the floor because this closet is obnoxious and requires a full gut. I have to take everything out of this closet and repurpose it again for this winter. I am definitely throwing things on the floor. This closet is a mess. It is a project for December and I am sure I will film it and take you along with me. Let me know if you want to see that video. But this is a seasonal closet for us and I just need to reset it for the coming winter months. And so I added it to my list of things that have been tallying for the week. I just need to organize that hall closet. I need to take out all the sports gear. I need to put everything away. It's just a project on its own that could warrant its own video of what I do for tidying and cleaning and organizing and how I pace it through my day. This bag <laughs> is out of control. This is my restaurants, doctor's appointment, sports entertainment bag for whichever kids of mine are not doing the thing. So if we're at karate, this is a bag of stuff for Jack. If we're at a doctor's appointment, it's a bag of stuff for whichever kid is not being seen by the doctor. <clears throat> we're at a restaurant, it's for all three kids. And it's just too many options and it's too heavy. There's probably some trash in here too. So I just wanted to recalibrate what's in here. I brought it in from my car when we got home this morning. With some markers. I don't need the packaging. A little skateboard. In pictures is a favorite. Color wonder is good. I'm just gonna put the color sheets with markers. All right, um, I'm gonna put these on the school shelves. They're not really like an out of the house activity. This can go with the other Big Nate books on the shelf. And then all these like fast food puzzles. That's way better. Trash and recycling. So that cleaned out the bag and then these are just gonna stay home, stay home, stay home. So this is the dining room after, you know, I had reset it. Nothing on the floor really right now, um, but there was some stuff on the table. This is the family room after the big reset on Monday. It's still kind of put together for the most part. Down the hallway, I, I finally brought my Christmas bins up, so I need to do something about those soon. But the winter gear is picked up and the school room still has no attention whatsoever from a decluttering standpoint <laughs> from me. But I'm just earmarking for that for Thursday or when the mood might strike because that feels like a really big project. So I quickly tackle my daily five. So I make the beds, I tidy, I do the laundry, I reset the kitchen and I run the vacuum on the main level. 
after a good two day reset of just tackling room by room, it gets a little bit easier for me to knock out those daily five and I can do them all in under 30 minutes. The laundry being the exception to go from start to finish and I usually have multiple loads of laundry that I'm doing each day just because we have a lot of things that we um, clean in our laundry. <laughs> I'm teaching the kids how to rewear things. My 10 year old's getting pretty good at it uh, for rewearing pajamas but changing your underwear. I mean these are all like these little habits that you teach children along the way that will ultimately lessen the laundry load. But for now, it just feels like me doing laundry every single day is best for our family and it gets it done. I have tried the one day a week method where you just clean everything in one day and you're done laundry for the week. I have tried one load a day that doesn't keep up with it. So um, and when I throw in dog beds and sports gear and um, you know, went, washing all this winter gear because the dogs made a bed out of it when the kids threw it on the floor. Like it just kind of adds up quickly, I guess. And so laundry is the exception to me tackling my daily five in 30 minutes or less. Um, but I can zip in and out of all of the rest of them and at least start laundry as part of my checklist. I always try to hit the main floor for laundry or for vacuuming every single day. This is my cordless vac. I've had it for I think two years now and it's been really great. It keeps up with the hardwood to rug transition. It does a really great job with dog hair. On my Tuesday checklist, I reset our primary bedroom. This mattress has been on our floor next to my side of the bed for a while really since my mom passed my daughter's been sleeping there she just finds it um she, she just finds it easier to sleep when she's close by us now we have motivated her to move back to her bedroom and created a little incentive timeline after three nights in there sleeping by yourself 10 nights 50 nights and 100 nights she got to put a prize to each of those milestones and she chose an extra device day because they only get two device days a week an extra device day she chose an icy from 7-eleven uh, a mom day or just a girl's day me and her just go out for the day and then a clothing shopping trip where she can spend $100 on her 100th night of sleeping by herself in her room uh, it, it's it was time she had said she wanted to move to her bed and so we always just try to give the kids the safety and security they need especially during a time of grief where we're all managing our own feelings and so she had a lot of stuff left in here there's trash her stuffed animals her book basket this is her bedtime basket with all her stuff she had some laundry and a sleep mask and it was all stuff that was remaining and she has been sleeping in her bed so I wanted to get everything out of that space in my bedroom and give my room a reset where it gets back to nothing on this section of my bedroom and we store this mattress under my bed and one of the kids sleeps on it whenever we have guests one of the kids gives up their bed for guests and we pull out that mattress or if you know somebody needs to sleep near us they have that option and we afford that to them and so I uh, put everything where it belonged I started with a tidy in my bedroom I generally do not touch my husband's side of the bed except for the dog crate stuff I will you know clean around the dog crate dog crates but I don't touch his side of the bed whatever he's left on the floor whatever's on his nightstand I leave it to him to deal with to clean um, if he wants me to I he'll remove that stuff and I'll be able to clean but otherwise that's his space and I and I generally try to respect it it doesn't really bother me whatever it is that he keeps on his side in the back of my mind this day I knew I wanted to catch up with mopping because today normally I would also mop this entire floor all the bedrooms um, and I wanted to make sure that um, I had vacuumed everywhere and because you can't really mop in my house before you run the vacuum and sweep or else you're just going to push dirt and uh, dust and dog hair all over the place with the mop. So I had to make sure I had enough time and energy to be able to do that. So my goal with my bedroom was to get everything picked up and, and run the vacuum and dust in that room, which I did. And that rolled for me the energy just kept rolling for me and I wanted to be able to mop the whole house and I have a Libmin mop with removable mop heads I have an eight pack of mop heads and two buckets that's my system I fill one bucket with warm water and Castile soap and then I have another bucket 
to capture all the dirty mop heads. I don't put a dirty mop head back into the clean water bucket. I just take off the dirty mop head, I put it in the second bucket, and I, and I attach another mop head. Then I just wash all of my mop heads at once in the laundry basket. Most weeks, this is how I do the mopping, and I usually hit both floors, the main level and then the bedroom level, and I just get all the mopping done in one day. I usually do push this Monday task of mopping the main floor onto Tuesday because then I just have to do, I have to like wait to get the other set of mop heads to do the laundry. I've just found this to be easier. This is usually how I roll. I probably will update my cleaning schedule a little bit to reflect the way I actually do it. Um, and But it, that's the beauty of this checklist that I have on my daily five is there's so much flexibility based on our schedule, <laughs> my interest, my energy level, uh, my availability. If there's, you know, if all we really want to do for the day is play board games or play outside because it's a gorgeous day, then that's what we do. Um, and on this particular day that I filmed, I made sure that I had time to do this and show you the flexibility of pushing something onto the next day and the need for grace and forgiveness. If you skip a week of mopping or if you skip two weeks or three weeks, whatever it is, it's okay. It, you know, it's, it is what it is on some days and I have needed a lot of grace this year in dealing with a lot of things. And I definitely did not mop my floors every single week. I definitely did not tidy every day for big stretches of time. And that's why the beauty of these routines and getting back to them feels so amazing for me. To be able to get back in here and get back to doing this and keeping the house that's, uh, you know, tidied, that is easy to tidy, not a clean and tidy home. It is a home that is easy to tidy and easy to clean. And there's a difference. There's definitely a line for me. I do not keep a clean and tidy home all the time. My home is easy to clean and easy to tidy. And that's because we live here and things at life ebbs and flows. And I have learned to appreciate the need for flexibility and how therapeutic it can feel to clean your house in small chunks every single day. And instead of just doing it all at once or doing it to an extreme, I just can't do that anymore. I just can't clean my whole house in a day. Uh, every three months, every three to six months, we spend a couple hundred dollars and have house cleaners come in and do the whole house. It, this, this, um, I just did it in November. Um, before we had a party, <laughs> I hired the house cleaners. It's the first time I hired them in four months. They sent six professional house cleaners and they were here for three and a half hours. That is how long it takes to do a full house cleaning in my house. Six professional women, three and a half hours. There's no way that I can do that on a daily basis or a weekly basis. I just can't keep up with that expectation or that amount or that level of cleanliness that a team can provide. And giving myself the grace and the room in the budget to be able to do something like that is a treat for my family, for me, for the dogs, for the people coming to the party for the birthday, uh, to be able to reset my home in that way. Because they're going to get in there and they're going to do it all at once and the whole house is going to be amazing at once rather than just a couple of rooms each day with my daily five. And I'm just going to wash my mop heads. My regular drops detergent pod and some vinegar. Got my vinegar. A hot cycle and then I air dry them. And the last part of this video is Wednesday. On Wednesday, I focus on the kids' rooms, I vacuum the couches, and I clean the bathrooms. But I also do my daily five, and I try to make my bed before I even make it downstairs. Sometimes it happens. The boys already got started on their rooms. My daughter generally keeps her room clean, but the boys, I don't know, they just, they're just messier. Uh, they just play in their rooms more than my daughter does. So during the week, they have more toys out. They especially play before bedtime, building train tracks and cars and stuff. And they want to leave that out while, like, for the night 
their creations. And so stuff just gets messier in their room. On this day, I also wanted to catch up because I didn't do any of the kids bedding yet this week. So I wanted to combine that in one load and rather than trying to do it in multiple loads. So I stripped all the beds for all the kids and put it all in a load to do. And I'll do their blankets separately from their sheets. So I just wanted to get their sheets in. Also on Wednesday, um, I had the mop heads that were air drying and I also watched wash my youngest son's clothes on Wednesdays uh, and the final load of laundry on Wednesdays is white um, the little whites and lights my uh, daughter's room clean I already stripped the bed and so I jumped right into the bathrooms after I got dressed for the day and I just wanted to do our bathroom which you're seeing right here in this video the sink uh, the countertop, which is usually pretty clear, so it just makes it easy to clean. I do the mirrors, and then I also clean the showers and the bathrooms. I try to get in and out in under 10 minutes in the bathroom. When I do a deep clean and do, you know, the floors and the baseboards and the windows and, the, and from really ceiling to floor, it takes a lot longer. But generally on a weekly basis, I try to keep it easy. And I keep cleaning supplies in the bathroom so that I don't have to go get something in order to do this job. My other point of focus for bathrooms this week was the kids' bathroom. It's just on the other side upstairs. And they usually, part of their chore is to clean the, the countertops and they have wipes. Uh, I get in there, when I'm in there, I actually take everything apart and scrub stuff, uh, especially their toothbrush caddy every week. It's actually very annoying to clean. And I was just so, trying to clean it in the sink before I decided I wasn't. This thing is annoying to clean every week. I'm going to throw it away, but, but keep their cups. I wash their cups in the dishwasher or um, at the kitchen sink um, every week, but this gets dirty in there, even though it has drains on the bottom, <clears throat> it's annoying to clean. So I'm going to throw it out. I immediately felt better after that decision because it's such an annoying part of cleaning this bathroom every week. I can't believe I did it as long as I did before I threw it out. But it's just one of those quick decision things that when you focus on a room, just one or two rooms a day, it gives you a chance to say, "Am I? is this really how I want to spend my time? Is this really what I want to be doing? Is this how I want to clean? And the answer that day was no. And I felt good about the decision. And then I wiped down the toothbrushes that get absolutely sticky and disgusting with three kids. Wiped down the mirrors, cleaned the uh, toilet and the shower, and then went back in to check on how the boys' progress in cleaning their room was going. They just needed extra time to play and be silly with each other to get this job done. It took them like 90 minutes to tidy up their room <laughs> this week, but it is what it is and it's fine and it's beautiful and it's all picked up and now I can run the vacuum um, and even just do the spot mop if I wanted to. This is my son's latest Lego creation up here on his shelves. And so I just go downstairs and update my sheet to keep track of all the things that I'm working on for the day, anything that I need to reset. And then I just, I uncheck anything from the day before, checking uh, the boxes as I go. And it helps me just kind of keep track and figure out what still needs to do. I knew when I needed to reset the kitchen. In order for me to reset the kitchen, I need the kids to empty the dishwasher. It's just their chore, it's just their job. And so the boys teamed up to do it together. A lot of what goes in this drawer right here, we call the kids drawer. It's bowls and cups and plates that the kids can use and access on a low point in the kitchen. And once they're done that, it frees me up to load the dishes from the morning into the dishwasher and get the countertops reset back to clear. And since I had done a lot of the work on Monday, it now is just in maintenance mode and putting things away and uh, putting you know dishes from the sink into the dishwasher. I do not like emptying the dishwasher. It was my chore as a child, and now I have pawned it off onto my own children, and I wait for them to do it, and I accept that my countertop is messy until they get a chance to do it. Also on Wednesdays, I give the couches a vacuum. I keep it simple. Instead of like trying to do the whole room that day, 
I just added this to my Wednesday checklist. I had moved this particular chore around to a couple of different days and it landed on Wednesday on, and it seemed like the best day for me energy wise. And it made sense for me uh, to have the little hand back that went around and gets in all the little nooks and crannies of the couch. I just did a video uh, reorganizing the lunchbox cabinet, utensils and baking dishes. I'll leave that video here for you to watch next. I'm really glad you shared part of your day and made it all the way to the end of this video. Thank you for being here and I hope you're doing well. I'll see you in the next video.